Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show all of you five time-saving add-ons that you can try out inside of Blender. So although they're called add-ons, all of these you can actually grab straight from within the preferences. None of them actually require downloading. So if you need to find any of them, you can just go into Edit, Preferences, then you can go in here and search for the ones I'm talking about. So the first one's called Bolt Factory. So when you enable Bolt Factory, it gives you a, a couple options for creating default template meshes that you can use for creating nuts and bolts, as the name would imply. So you can find this whenever you go up to the Add menu, and then you go down here to Bolt. Alternatively, you can hit Shift A to bring up the same menu. So when we add in a bolt, you would get a bolt shape as you would expect. So we have the head up here the thread down here spiraling towards the bottom and you have the option of having a shank length as well so if we expand this menu just after adding it uh, with that shift a method you can see that we can change various settings about it such as the head of the height the length of the shank which defaults to zero but if we increase this you'll see we get this flat surface between uh, the head and the thread and very notably for this add-on we can also change the model type from the bolt to a nut so as you might imagine, if you're modeling something mechanical that would require a lot of nuts and bolts, uh, then having these shapes readily available for you to just add in with various settings you can control to get the precise shapes you need. So in the nature of this kind of add-on, another one which also gives you extra mesh templates, but aimed more at buildings and architecture, uh, we can go to Edit Preferences, and we can search for ArchiMesh. So we want add mesh ArchiMesh here. So just like with the Bolt Factory, if we hit Shift A to go into the Add menu, we can go down here to Mesh, and at the bottom we're gonna have ArchiMesh. So you can see a bunch of different options here, generating an entire room, adding in cabinets, columns, roofs, and also some decoration props as well. So for instance, if we wanted to quickly generate a room using ArchiMesh, I can hit Shift A, go into Mesh Mode, go down here to ArchiMesh, Room, and when you do that in the bottom left, if you expand this little pop-up, if it's not already open, uh, it'll say to use in property panel to define parameters. So hitting in, having this slide out, you can go down to the create menu and you can determine the number of walls you want for your room. So I'm going to just say three here. And then I'll also check close, which will take the final wall and connect it to the first. Now we can determine the length of each wall to create the room shape. Uh, for this wall three, I'm going to make it a negative length. I could just make it negative 3.1, create a square room. So basically, we got all four walls. Uh, you can also see a baseboard down there at the bottom. You can check ceiling and floor if you want as well. So now that we have a sealed off room and we can uncheck the ceiling if we want as well. Maybe I'll do that so it's a little easier to see what's going on can do shift and right click to set the area we might want to add a door and now I'll just hit this door icon let's rotate the door so I guess we want it 90 degrees and more or less we have the door already kind of positioned where we might want it for this room uh, you can see on both sides uh, looking quite nice so we can also do that with things like windows so let's add in a rail window there and then let's rotate 90 degrees can control the window height and if we decide this is you know too high we can hit Control z a few times undo it and just change where we put our 3d cursor to add that window in again so let's add it back in rotate 90 degrees and so you can see by using archimesh you can pretty quickly generate a very simple house or other types of architecture the next two add-ons are auto mirror and boolean tool or bool tool um, so what this allows you to do is to quickly do mirror options without having to add a modifier to an object, uh, but rather you'll get another menu inside of this end panel. So if I go and do add mesh cube, and then we come in here to edit auto mirror. So for this cube, we might decide, okay, we're going to model something we want to be symmetric. So normally you would add in the mirror modifier over here, but if you just pop open the auto mirror menu, then you can hit auto mirror once here after you select which axes you want to uh, mirror across. And uh, with cut in mirror added in, what you're going to get is that it's basically going to cut the object in half and then mirror it. 
So rather than when you add the modifier, you'd still have all of the vertices from both sides. Here, uh, you only have half of them because now it's just taking the original shape, uh, cutting it in half, and then mirroring it. So it kind of saves you some steps. So at this point, we'd just be able to go ahead and start working on a totally symmetric option. So with Auto Mirror, when we go ahead and click Auto Mirror here, after choosing what axes we want to mirror on, if we have Cut and Mirror selected, uh, what you'll see when we go Tab into Edit Mode is that uh, not only is it mirrored across the X axis, uh, but what it does is it takes the original shape, cuts it in half, and then mirrors it. So all of those other vertices uh, that you'd have on the left side of this object are basically removed, and the object's going to maintain its shape since it's taking half the object and then mirroring it across the x-axis. So normally, if you wanted to do that, it would be a few extra steps. You'd have to add in the mirror modifier here. And then if you wanted to delete any of the vertices, you'd probably need to do that more manually. Uh, but here, it's just kind of one click, and you have everything set up. So it's going to end up being a little bit of a time saver there, since many objects you model are going to be symmetric anyway. Um, so just having a one-click option is a little bit faster. So kind of similar is the bool tool. I'm going to add in another cube and let's just move it into position here. So these two objects overlap and the Boolean tool basically allows you to do these Boolean operations where depending on where two objects overlap from each other, you can have Blender automatically calculate those positions where they intersect and then to spit out some kind of a result. So if you want intersect here, what that means is that after you take these two objects, so you select one left click, hold shift, left click the other object, and then you choose intersect, what's going to remain after you click that is going to be only the areas where these two objects intersect. So if it intersect right here, you can see, in a sense, a new cube gets created out of uh, the overlap from the old ones. So you can see if you go between them, control Z a few times, how that kind of creates that. You can also do a union, which merges two objects together. So wherever there was an overlap, you're now going to have vertices. So it's a nice quick way to just combine two objects to get them into one more complex option. Uh, you can see here that the um, face here that gets spit out of that has uh, six vertices, so not exactly ideal. So another operation you can do with these two objects is uh, union which is going to combine the selected objects into one. And note that if I move any of these new vertices that got created, like so, that you can see that it's affecting uh, both of the original objects because they are in fact just one single unit now. Okay, and then the difference operation. If I select my first object, this is gonna be cut out of the second one we select. So if I hold shift, left click this one, um, and we hit difference, then wherever this object, the first one we selected overlaps the second one, it's going to just cut a chunk out of the second one and then disappear. So we can see where they overlapped before. Now there's a giant hole, um, but the first one is completely removed. And then we have slice. So slice will remove the first object, but what this is going to do is it's going to cut into the second object and basically make them two separate pieces wherever this one overlaps the other one. So if I hit slice, we can see that there's still the original cube, but they're actually separate objects here right now, uh, though the positions stay the same. So these Boolean operations, you could already do them without the plugin, but what you'd have to do is go into the modifiers menu, add a modifier, choose Boolean, choose the type of Boolean, select the object that you're using as the second uh, mesh object for the Boolean. And then if you choose, you'd have to go ahead and commit it by clicking here and doing apply. Uh, so obviously you can see that with the Boolean tool, it's just a lot quicker to do that, less steps involved. And the last add-on I want to show for this video is Rigify. So once again, like all the others, you can just find it in preferences, search Rigify, enable it. And what this will allow you to do is to quickly generate a standard out of the box uh, bone armatures for your characters. So if I hit Shift A uh, and we go down to the armature menu, you'll see human meta rig, animals, and basic. So uh, the meta rig also includes a bunch of bones for face animation. And then the basic one just kind of excludes that and uh, only has a couple head bones as well. But basically, what you can do with these armatures is just uh, resize and position them to uh, your characters that you've already gone ahead and modeled and use it as a starting place 
for uh, doing your animations. So after you do the weight assigning uh, to all of these bones, you have something you can quickly start working with in order to animate your characters. So it's a major time saving thing. The time it would take to go ahead and create all of these bones, make sure they're perfectly mirrored. Every time you make a character would get a little bit tedious. And also this makes sure that you're kind of working from a standard every time you go ahead and start making animated characters. So this is also going to end up being a huge time saver and you won't always have to worry so much about um, making sure that the armature is quite atomically correct since you've already got a pretty good setup here. So Vigify would definitely be a major time saver if you're trying to do any animation for characters inside of Blender as well. So that's pretty much going to cover it for this rough overview of five different plugins you can use in Blender to save yourself a bunch of time when you're modeling and animating inside of the program. Hopefully you got something out of this video. Thanks for watching. I've been Chris and I'll see you all in my future video content.